So I realize in yesterday's stream we were going to talk a little bit about, and I'm just going to touch this really quickly. So load tool, where was that at? Was it streaming? Actually, you know what? I think I know where it was. It was, there it is. Painter bakes demo, gun bake, ZBrush. Oh, you know what? I can actually just import this. So, this thing here. So this is uh, this is what was in Painter, and this is what I'd used for my, um, I guess promotional stuff for the ZBrush beta, and using the new live boolean system. And oh, you know what? I actually do have something here. Uh, now that I think about it, give me a second. Hey, Wolf! Thanks for showing up. Um, still get my brain fired up here. There it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> just found my brain. Share the magazine to start the pre-order now. Featured page on the website. Let's see. So, um, I'm going to be in a, a Chinese magazine where I go over the, I do a, I did a tutorial on the making of this. And it's going to be issue number 32 on incgmedia.com. And uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video companion to the making of this following my tutorial I did for that magazine. So anyway, that's not going to happen probably uh, maybe maybe this Thursday I'll do that. Uh, no, I'll wait. We'll, we'll wait for a little bit for that. Anyways, uh, we can go over a little bit of that today anyways. But so we have this here and what we were going to talk about last time was how I went from ZBrush. So here's my ZBrush bake file. And all it really is is just all my high res all broken out into different animatable pieces here. Now this isn't what was animatable. Uh, I actually made or we actually made a bunch of changes where this this thing isn't like a revolving cylinder. This whole thing breaks down and then pops out this way. So it's kind of a it's a little bit of a weirdo gun, but um, basically what we have is a bunch of different subtools here. So if I go into solo mode here, you're going to see anything that that animates or that would slide out is broken off into a different piece here and renamed. Uh, whenever you rename a file in ZBrush or you save a file in ZBrush, it's going to rename your very top subtool. So what I would suggest is doing like a insert, just a poly mesh 3D star, usually what I do. And I'll set that up at the top, and then I can rename this trigger high. Let's go do that. Now, uh, in ZBrush for R8, you can do an underscore. In R7 and before, you would have to do, I think, Alt-Shift underscore to get that to happen. Uh, but now I can name this trigger high. Now, if I want to save this, it'll go ahead and save it as, you know, let's say gun bake. So now this little dummy object will sit up here and hold that name for me, and then the rest of the subtools won't ever change their names. Uh, then what I ended up doing was going into Z plugin, FBX, export, and then just exporting all visible. Uh, it's going to export your namespaces here. Uh, and then what I went through is I went through each one of these things and decimated it down. So let me go ahead and load that up here. So if I go to FBX import, I'll go ahead and load that FBX in. So let's see, bake. Oh, where's my pistol low? U mesh, render nose, bake, painter. Hmm. I don't even have the pistol low here at the house, but <laughs> basically it would just be every single one of these decimated down, UV'd. Um, all the normals when I export this thing would be uh, soft normals on export. Let's see, smoothing levels. Yeah, smooth normals amount to 100. Um, so I export that out and then throw that into Painter. And then when I go to bake all this stuff, it would be under the texture settings, bake. And then I just bake, you know, load in the high res, tell it what size I want to bake at, bake everything out. And then that throws your textures in here. And then it's just a matter of texturing this thing up. Uh, then just quickly hopping over here into iRay and doing some very quick, um, a little more beauty render type stuff. And then you could set your uh, min max samples over here as well as saving your render at whatever size you'd like. 
and all that good stuff. And you can also change out your dome and stuff like this. This is just like uh, in Keyshot where you change out your HDRI image to light your object here. So if you turn off clear color, you can kind of see what, how it's being lit. So we can go over here and change this to like, you know, whatever, another panoramic here. There we go. So anyway, that was what I wanted to talk about. And this isn't like game res ready. It's pretty high resolution mesh, but just for really quick preview purposes and getting this thing textured up and in, uh, that's how I would approach that. And like I mentioned before, hey Mordekiner, um, if you wanted to see more on that process, you can go to, I don't do a whole lot of that on this channel just because it's not particularly exciting to watch me just decimate stuff down, but I do non-exciting things on my channel not really, but I do go over that in the live stream full episodes here. If you scroll way down, you'll see some robots that we go through the process on. Um, let me go to my streaming topics here. I have nothing really as usual. Sometimes I'll come in here and I'll be like, oh, I'm definitely going to work on this, but uh, not today. I do have one. Oh, boy, this is a tough one. Collar rough like from old, so the old Victorian collar rough. So let's see if I can do that. I'm scared. Uh, let me think, let me think. So to do a collar rough, like the ruffles and stuff, it's basically, if I go, okay, so I'm in 2.5D mode with a simple brush and we'll do a dot stroke and we'll do an alpha. So it's basically, uh, is it gonna let me, there we go. It's just that kind of look here. Um, something tells me, I could use it, I could do this shape here, and then I could do an array mesh, and then I could weld. Um, or I could just do it in a straight line and use a curve deformer to, so I could repeat it in a straight line this way and then use a curve deformer to curve it into a circle. But then getting this shape here, let me think about this. So it'd be just basically just a box, just a repeating sine wave. So. Let's see if we have something like that. Do we have a repeating sine wave in the form of terrain, maybe? Let's see. It's been a while since I messed around with this. Let's see, initialize. Um, so the V profile here is what's controlling that profile. Okay, I think we can do this. And then here's the H profile. Um, so this is going to give me, so if you drag off and then drag back on, that's gonna go from a kind of a softer fall off and you can change the fall off a bit with this soft fall off and if you want to get sharp just drag it off and then back on again without letting go and then you got a sharp fall off so we want a soft fall off here and then we probably want to like bring this in a bit if we want to repeat this I think we can also okay so here's multiple of that so that'll kind of give us our shape here a repeating shape I wonder if we need more resolution V divides. So there's our more resolution. Here's our shapes. Here's our repeating tiles. So we can repeat it however many times we want, and then we can just bend that in a circle. Um, we don't need that many H divides, do we? Drop that down. I'm not even sure we need that many V divides. So we kind of got a ruffle here. Now on the top of these things, let's go down back down to the tile. I'm going to spread these out just a bit because we want these to be almost touching. In fact, I'm just going to drag this top one off. And then down here, I'm going to raise these up a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to tile this one. Is that a little bit closer? No. I really need to drag these things out. I'm trying to get that fluffy shape but it keeps wanting to go up there okay let me put another control here uh, it still keeps wanting to do that hmm mm -hmm. like I said it's been a while since I messed with this thing let's go ahead and try tiling just twice so that'll give me two tiles here I mean I can go in here and manually deform this or I can just do one tile and like I said I just repeat this over so if I change this V divides down quite a bit we can just like start with this shape here and then we'll go ahead and say, okay, make poly mesh 3D. And we'll scale this down. And this will be our repeating. Let's go ahead and turn on double. That's going to be under your display properties, double. And then 
we can just drag control drag over the top of this um, sometimes when I'm in here and I want to see the side I, that's when I'll turn on perspective here so I can kind of see what I'm doing invert that and then I'm just going to flare this out a bit so that way these are going to be almost touching now if I want to repeat this and I'm also going to want to bring these edges in so I'm going to hold down control let's go ahead and turn on X to go across oh X in the trees that way okay that's my bad so let's go ahead and hold down shift and we'll point the Z forward and now I'll do a quick mirror and weld across the X axis. There we go. And then with X turned on, I'll be able to move this out a bit. So we'll flare this one out. And then on this side in here, we'll flare this side in maybe. Invert that. I want these to be almost touching here. Let's turn off perspective. All right, we'll do it this way. Q mesh polygroup, I'll just give it a little bit of thickness here. Now I can see from the side. I'm going to take these ones here, invert that, and I'm going to pull these ones in so they're almost touching. And then those are almost out, so they're touching here. I mean, I guess you could take a cylinder here and a cylinder here and have them move however you want, but uh, I'm just going to really quickly kind of dial in exactly what I'm looking for here. But I do want to keep those masked. So here is going to go up and around and out. And then if I want to kind of preview what this is going to look like, let's go ahead and turn on array mesh really quickly. So we'll do array mesh and we'll turn it on and we'll go into offset X amount. here. So this is where the lowest point needs to be, is this side over here. Mask. There we go. And then we'll offset this. Okay. So something like this. And then if I, I want these to be almost touching here, and then I want these to be almost touching down here. Oh boy. Okay. Now if I want to kind of smooth these out, I'm just going to go over here to bevel edge loop complete and that'll give us a little bit more of that shape and then I'll bevel this one here. Give us a little bit more of that shape. That'll work. So now if I go through and I array mesh this one, it will behave a little bit more like I'm expecting. Now I'm going to insert single edge loop. Kind of a roundabout way to find the shape. And I was hoping to get that more using just the terrain tool, but I couldn't get that curve to cooperate with me. But we'll say this is good enough. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this extraneous information here. So I'm going to go back to array mesh, just turn that off. I'm going to go hold down control shift. I'm going to get rid of all this, just hold down control shift and alt. Then we will delete hidden like so. And now I can just go through here and use my move brush and we'll quickly just rearrange some of these points here. So now if I go straight back from this one, this will be a lot cleaner and I'm just moving it along that flat plane here. You're going to see it kind of disappears from the side. Um, so we're good. We got our shape that we want. And now let's go ahead and hit Control W, make that all one poly group here. And it will also go into our geometry crease menu and we'll hit uncrease all. So now if we go back through here, Q mesh poly group all, if we pull this forward, we've got our shape. It's going to be our basic ruffle. I think that's how they look. I think that's right. And then um, let's go ahead and take these edges here. And I'm going to take the clip curve and we're still working across that symmetry. I'm going to just clip those back to a straight line. So what we can do with a ray mesh, I think, is if we uh, Q mesh, let's go to poly group, a single poly. I'm going to tap alt. So we've got green on both sides. So now if I was to do, there's a couple different ways we could do this. We could try doing an array mesh with a uh, repeat of however many we want to repeat. And I want to say rotate this in the Y amount say 360 degrees and then from the top I'm going to set that pivot let's go ahead and turn on transpose we'll lock position lock size hit W hit Y and then just change that pivot here so that uh, we're going around in a circle except we want to go around in a circle this way so let me see So 
not that way. Not Z amount. You know, this might be easier just to use the curve. Because I might have to rotate this thing. We want to rotate this way, but then we also want to rotate this thing. Turn off X. Y. Bear with me. We'd have to rotate it this way and get those to line up. But let's let's take the easy route. So we're going to do an array mesh offset X amount, and we can just array mesh this out. And I think if we hit make mesh, it's going to go ahead and weld that for me because we have extrude turned on. Um, so if we wanted to, we could actually skip this little midpoint here and have it extrude across. But then, yeah, let's just do this. Let's move that X amount. I mean, you can try and like match that up and then just do a weld points. Um, or you can just kind of fudge it a little bit and then you can do make mesh and then and that'll give you your extrude. And then if you have this here, then you would just need to hold down alt. We'll snap that to the center and we'll reset it. And we'll go in here and we'll do a bend arc and we'll say the angle is going to be 180 degrees and that'll kind of be the start of your ruffle. So it looks like we need a lot more of these ruffles here. So we'd have to repeat this like maybe 36 times. So a way to preview that. That's a tough one. Or you know you could also, uh, I wonder if I could do a tighter, I want to do a super tight arc. Think, think, think. Hmm. I could do bend curve or deformer. If I do a bend curve, and I want to bend it this axis with a low resolution, because I want to keep it here. Hmm. I wonder if a ray mesh is my best bet. Okay, let's see. I'm going to snap this to the center here. I'm going to hold down shift and we're going to go 90 degrees this way. And if I want to, I can also bend curve this one. So if I do a bend arc on this one slightly, we can give that a slight bend. And now if we do an array mesh with the repeat of, okay, however many we want, and also the rotate in the Y amount of 360, and then the pivot Moving lock size, transpose, array mesh, repeat. But I want it. Three hundred and sixty, oops. I want to match those up. How come this isn't working? Offset. Oh, I'll have to play with this. Anyway, something like that <laughs> where I would get this to go into a circle and then, I mean, I guess I could do, you could also do this shape into an insert nano mesh on a cylinder and that would also work. Kind of weird, but we go, okay, I like this shape here. Let's go ahead and grab our cylinder and Let's see, uh, that should work. We'll go ahead and do a make poly mesh 3D here, and I'm gonna go to geometry, delete loops, and then we'll squash this down. Let's go ahead and go in our gizmo mode here. And then we don't need these center ones here, so I'm gonna hold down control shift, and we're gonna go to select, alt, delete hidden. Okay, so then we wanna go to our Z mesh brush, and then we're gonna go to insert nano mesh, all polygons or polygroup all, hit M and we'll grab our little shape here. 
and then we just drag that out, and then we'll go into our nano mesh properties here. I'm going to tell it I want it to fit here with a size of one, and then we're going to go ahead and rotate some of this stuff around. So the offset's fine, I think. So X rotation, we'll say 90, and then Y rotation, 90. There we go. And then we just, it's just a matter of welding those uh, two different sides here to get what we're looking for here. And then Z rotation is fine. And then if you want to change the height or the length, no. Well, the length you can kind of play with here. And then the width, but we can, all, we can also do that later. But let's say that's something we can start with. And then we just need to bridge all those pieces there. Something like that, maybe. Um, hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, yeah, I need, I'll finish up Pickle Rick maybe today, or at least the laser cannon thing. Uh, okay. And then you could also do this in Marvelous Designer, where you could just take a piece of cloth and then just go and then have it do a bunch of ruffles as well. Um, cool. So, um, okay, so what's the best YouTube video tutorial to learn hard surface modeling in R8 with the Z modeler and stuff? Um, R8 and Z model. I'm not sure. If you want to know the kind of what's new with the Z modeler, we don't go into necessarily anything in particular. Um, if you missed it this morning, so here's a link to my playlist. There's a ZBrush 48 What's New. There's 60 videos in there, 60, 61 uh, of all the new features. Um, as far as like Z modeler, um, Actually, if you want to look at the Z modeler stuff, uh, I do a breakdown in Intro to ZBrush Part 3 on that link I just sent out. So you do Intro to ZBrush Part 3, we'll walk you through all the Z modeler stuff, and then you can go into the ZBrush 48, what's new with all the live Boolean stuff. And between those two, should give you a pretty good idea. Um, I mentioned this morning I'm going to be in a. Uh, there's going to be a Chinese magazine. If you go to incgmedia.com and scroll down, you're going to see the magazine's coming out. Whenever that comes out, I'm going to do a tutorial on um, that handgun we were working on. So, let's see, is this this demo? Yeah, we're gonna. I'm going to do a quick video companion to make this thing. You know, just the basics on how to make this thing. So that'll be something to look look for as well. Um, probably not this Thursday, probably mid-September is when I'm going to do that. Um, anyway, yeah, we were making neck ruffles. Uh, cylinder align to the edge for curve. Yeah, I was trying to think of like a cylinder into an inverted cylinder and then just bridge, bridging those two. Um, so you take this thing here, make poly mesh 3D, and then just drag out a copy here. And then uh, let's see, let's see if I can do this out of my element today. So we don't need any of this stuff, but I'm going to keep it around because I am just going to bridge like say these two edges here. So here to here, we're going to go ahead and delete hidden. And also we're going to go back here. I always forget delete loops, delete loops. Uh, that's not going to do it. Come on. All right. So <laughs> insert single edge loop. Sometimes it'll do it. Sometimes it won't. Um, I don't need all this extraneous stuff, but just for demonstration purposes, I can just kill those ones and just bridge these two. So I should be able to go through here to bridge these two together. Now I'm going to have to flip this cylinder here. So we're going to take all of these and we're going to go into display properties flip. It's all the way at the very bottom, by the way, display properties right there. And then we flip this one around. So when I bridge this edge here, bridge edges, we can bridge here to here will give us what we're looking for, and then I don't need any of this. Let's go ahead and delete hidden, and then I'm going to mirror this. Over. I'm going to mirror this, so we can go ahead and probably get rid of this and this. It's holding that control shift, and we don't need these extra pieces here. Okay, so we have our basic shape here. If I hit W. We've got our gizmo here. If I do turn on my floor, we want to be Z forward. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this up. Hold down shift. 
and now I'm just going to do a quick mirror, mirror and weld, and now we've got this basic shape, and we can go ahead and stop it this way. Let's go ahead and turn on X, go across X symmetry here, delete hidden, and now if I want to change this curve, I can go into insert, multiple edge loops, I'm going to go ahead and turn on double, jeez. There we go. Um, if you want this custom menu, go to my Gumroad or Cube Brush page and scroll down to the very, very bottom, and you can um, you can nab that if you want to. Oh, and I also want to go into interactive elevation, and I'm just going to kind of push this in. And we'll just get a nice smooth curve like that. Hit Control W, and now we can go to Q Mesh Poly Group All. Get that. So now when I array mesh this down. Let's give this a shot. Uh, let's also shrink this in a bit. No, it'll be fine. So if we go here to array mesh, we don't want to lock position inch size. I don't know. I'm obviously not an array mesh expert here. So we're going to rotate here in the Y amount. 360. And I'm going to do however many repeats I want to do. I'm going to set that pivot. Hit W, Y, transpose on so I can set this pivot ah pivot here let's say zero. Okay, so this is the Z amount is what I wanted to change on the offset. Good catch. Okay, so there's my there's my pivot set in the middle. There's my Z amount. I'm going to change the repeats to get these to snap. Um, I can also go through here and be like, okay, if I want to scrunch this down, I can just take this here and I can just squeeze it this way. We'll kind of thin that out, and then I can up my repeats to say 14 or so. And also, this is where I can get into that bend arc here. So I'm going to hit W, and then I'm going to go here to the bend arc. And I'm just going to, well, I don't want a bend arc. So let's turn the ray mesh off. Fine. No, 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 no. Gizmo 3D, W, snap to the center, reset, go out of X mode actually so I can snap to the center. And then I want to just, I just want to, I just want to bend arc this one. Just this one here. There we go. Okay, and I want to just curve this back just a little bit, but I want to also see my array mesh with that. So let's go ahead and do my repeats here of like say 16, 18, all right. And let's change that bend arc amount here to kind of match those up. That'll work, so that I kind of go around in a circle here. Okay, so we finally got a nice smooth one. Let's go ahead and do 17. And we're gonna go ahead and bridge uh, these together. So if I hit, okay, I like this one here. Turn off array mesh. Then again, I'm just gonna make this poly group a single poly. Make this obvious. There we go. So if we're purple on both sides here, now we have our array mesh on. And then when we say make mesh, it's going to extrude and bridge those. <gasps> Whew. Okay. And now uh, there you go. There's some ruffles. Whew. Man. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Going to catch up on some comments here. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, you're right, Thomas. The rotation needs to be set to 360 and then the pivot change. So, yes, thank you. It was that damn offset that was throwing me off. Um, different because of the D. Cool, cool. Everybody good? Um, is there anything new amazing compared to the 
uh, shotgun video you have on Gumroad. Do you show anything really new, amazing compared to the shotgun video on Gumroad on the handgun tutorial? Uh, yeah, on the shotgun tutorial, well, it's not that much different. Uh, modeling weapons is, um, I mean, oh man, you know what? I am going to be doing a lot more weapon and prop stuff soon, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but we'll see how that goes. I could be streaming a lot more in my future, but um, I've made a bunch of weapons. I just can't show them to you, but there's a lot of different techniques you can use to go from ZBrush to Unreal that are really, really interesting that we're, I'm kind of toying around with, but not today, but soonish. Uh, bu 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 Aren't you on Texas? You get hit right by the... No, uh, thanks, Thunder Bunny. Thanks for showing up. Um, we didn't get hit hard. I'm in Austin, so we got some light rain. Well, we got some rain and like 20 mile an hour winds, so it was actually kind of nice. It's about 70. Dropped us down to the 70s, which is very nice in Texas in the winter, or in the summer. Those are like wintertime temperatures. Usually it doesn't get out of the 90s until like mid-December some years. But... Um, yeah, so we weren't hit too bad, so hopefully everybody in Houston and along the coast, Galveston, Houston, stuff where they got hit pretty bad. Um, I'm looking to get a substance painter. A lot of people told me that Mari is the right way to go, which should I take into account to make the right call? Um, I used to use Mari a long time ago. I really love the procedural functionality, and for game res assets, um, you can do UDIMs inside Painter. Um, Mari's great. I would definitely use Mari if I'm just doing, like, pure high-res cinematic craziness um for game stuff it, painter's hard to beat um i haven't had a really good reason to not use painter for the past years but um you can use them both nothing wrong with that cool um, and you can, I think, uh, you can get trials of both of them. So just go through. If you want, I, I mean, this is a little bit dated, but if you go to my playlist here, uh, you can check out the Painter Quick Start. There's a Substance Designer Quick Start as well. Um, I haven't played with Mari in a long time, so I would have to really go do another deep dive in order to do a deep dive on that. But cool. I am hyped for the ZBrush Summit. I'm going to definitely checking that out. Uh, they have some really, really talented people showing up there, so... Keep it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's all I really have. So just shout out your questions here. And so we eventually got around to some cholera rough, rough. Thank you, Thomas, for, you know, the offset is where I was uh, messing up in my array mesh here. It's still early. Oh, and not that I would be any good at that anyways. But, okay. So we got our collar here. We did our cylinders. We did a little bit of bend arc. It's kind of a cool, cool tutorial. It would have been better if I would have prepared for that and come across this. <laughs> uh, example uh, before I showed up this morning, but we got through it. Um, you also saw a little bit of the terrain brush, which is kind of an interesting one. It didn't quite work out what I wanted to uh, for this demo, but it's kind of an interesting thing to kind of get some curves, like some sine waves going here. Of course, you can tie all this around and do offsets and all sorts of cool stuff with this uh, initialized stuff primitive. So we got that here. Uh, things to do, but uh, pickle Rick, we can get into a little bit here. Uh, I suppose armor. Everybody always wants to talk about armor and hair is usually my most my most asked things here. Um, uh, they made any changes to the match mover, mover brush. I'm using it for our sim, but it's going to be matching to the mesh underneath properly. So for the match mover brush, make sure that well, let's see. So we grab a sphere here. And then we want to go to subtool. Let's go ahead and append a ring. Let's try it. And then if I hold on shift. Now, did it make a polymesh 3D out of this one? No, oh, it didn't. Oops. Okay, polymesh 3D. Append. Append. A ring. Where did my ring go? There it is. So we take this ring here. And we're going to pull this out. Oh, here's another thing we could do. Let's go ahead and delete that. So we've got our PolyMesh 3D sphere here. And let's say, you know what? I want a different sphere. So I'm going to hit W. I'm going to go to BI Brush Insert Primitives. And then if you hit W here, you can go ahead and just cycle through these. So you can get a slightly different um, sphere here. So let's say, you know what? I want this sphere. That's a pretty cool sphere. So what I'm going to do is hold down Control and Tap. And then I'm going to say, okay, I want to add a ring to this. So we've got a cylinder pipe here. Uh, I don't have a ring primitive in here, but we can just grab a cylinder pipe for now. 
go into this setting here. Oh, there's our ring. So I'm just going to grab this ring here. And now you can go through here and very quickly, you know, change the radius here, change whatever that is, scale, uh, S divides, twist, and length divide. So we can kind of just make this a little bit um, easier to work with. We'll hit W. Now you're going to notice it, imp it implanted itself right where that gizmo is. So if we move our gizmo up here, and then we go back in here and we swap this thing out, that's where the uh, pivot's going to be for that object here. But we'll go back to our ring. So I've got our ring here, and we still like this. So we'll hit W, and then we'll go into split mass points here. So if I want to conform this particular object, let's say this ring, to the underlying sphere here, we can hit uh, B, M, M, matchmaker brush, and pull along here, and then I'll go ahead and conform it. And this is based on your camera angle. Um, so for example, let's go ahead, you know, let's swap this out. I'm going to hit brush insert primitives here, W, and we'll change this to, actually, let's change this to a polyplane. There we go. Let's go ahead and increase these divisions up. And then I'm going to take this one, I'm going to hit subdivide a couple of times. I'm going to scale this down. So now when I go to BMM and go ramp seems to be conforming okay, as I would expect. And like I said before, it's camera based. If you tilt your camera down here, you see how it's not gonna, the camera isn't gonna connect these two objects. So it'll conform this direction. It's also gonna skew it a little bit, but it's gonna ignore those. So you're gonna wanna make sure your camera is positioned how you want, and then you can use Matchmaker and just you pull that out. You also don't need to do a full Z intensity. You can drop that down to like say 50. And then when you do that, it'll be just a general curve or you can match it perfectly. Um, what I was going to mention is if you wanted to say, um, if you take this, go to B, hit B, create insert mesh and append uh, new. We're going to uh, make a new insert mesh better that brush out of that. Um, oh, you know what? Did I have? No, I had the plane selected. So now when I drag this out, uh, we have an insert mesh brush of that plane. You can also go in here to your brushes and I actually like to do this more. It's a little bit easier for me to work without having to do the matchmaker. Matchmaker is good for a lot of stuff too. Um, but for instance, you can also use this as your modifiers. You have a projection strength. So if I crank that up to 100 and I start inserting it on that sphere, you're going to need to make sure you have the sphere selected. And also, we don't have subdivision history. So now as I'm inserting that plane, it's conforming to that sphere. Uh, in order to see that a little bit better, I'm going to take this curve, <laughs> uh, depth, not curve, and I'm going to pull that out just a little bit. So when I, I'm, I'm inserting this plane, and as I'm inserting it, it's automatically projecting to the underlying mesh here. Um, now, of course, that, again, that doesn't even need to be at a full intensity. You can take that projection strength down to like 50-ish, and now it's going to just curve 50%, or you can do 100%, and wrap it here if you wanted to touch your mesh. Again, just drop that embed down to zero. And now when I'm inserting this mesh, it's gonna insert, it's gonna just conform perfectly on here. Uh, we used a little bit of that functionality when we were doing, if, okay, if you go to my ZBrush channel here, uh, if you scroll down, we talked a bit about that when we were doing this one. So you can take these kind of shapes and you can insert them or you can use the matchmaker brush and just conform it to the surface of your object here. So for example, uh, let's see, let's do a shadow box, I guess. Let's go over here to our, we've got our sphere here. I don't need this cylinder anymore or this polyplane. So I'm going to delete that. If we take this sphere, I'm going to go ahead and reset that back to, actually I'm going to reset this to the middle and I'm going to put this right in the middle of the world. Um, and now what we can do is we can duplicate this off and I'm going to go into geometry, uh, 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 and close these things down, hurt my brain. Shadow box, Hit shadow box here and you know what, I'm going to go out of shadow box, I'm going to crank this resolution up to like 256 turn this polish down to three maybe, and then go back into shadow box here. So with shadow box turned on, I'm going to turn off that thing. So we've got a shadow box here, I can control drag, and now wherever I put a shadow or a mask, it will go ahead, let's turn on transparency, it will go ahead and make 
something unique. Uh, in order to make something crazy, let's go into our alphas. I'm going to hit comma key, alpha, and I might have some stencils in here maybe. I'm just looking to make something wacky. I guess this will work. So we'll hold down control. We're going to load in our alpha. We're going to say drag rect. We're going to take our focal shift down to negative 100. And now when we drag that out and drop it, it'll go ahead and give us uh, this shape here. Again, if we want to make this actual geometry, we got to go out of shadow box and there's our actual geometry. If you want to, we can go, you know what, I need more resolution. So we'll go up to 512, go back into shadow box. There we go. And this will give us more resolution. And, you know, you, you want to watch it and make sure that your resolution isn't overkill. Um, but, you know, let's say that's what I'm looking for here. So I'm going to go out of shadow box mode. We have real geometry. Uh, it's also going to give us very nice uh, polygroups here. So we got front and back polygroup. So if I want to make this possibly a little bit more usable, what I can do is hold down control shift, isolate this one here, hit delete hidden. And I'm going to go to the back here and I'm going to kill that side here. I'm going to hold down control shift, clip this back to a straight line. And now we can use our Z remesher, which will be under geometry, Z remesh. Let's say I'm going to do adaptive size down quite a bit, half polygon count. So we're going to go from 14 to like 7 and then hit Z remesh. And that'll just give us a little bit of new geometry. I can just keep hitting half and kind of just simplifying this geometry. You don't have to do that step. Um, I just like to work with a little bit more predictable geometry here. Um, hit control W if you want, Q mesh polygroup all, we'll just pull this forward. So now we have um, this right here. So in this case, I can go again, B, create insert mesh. Um, if I want to append it, I can, or I can just hit a new brush and then we'll go back to our polysphere here. And now at this one, if I have my projection strength up to 100, as I insert this, it's gonna go ahead and wrap that object perfectly onto the underlying surface. Or, if you're so inclined, you could take this one here, and with the matchmaker brush, let's go ahead and move this out. And you can scale this up a little bit. And then you can go BMM, and now you can use your matchmaker brush to conform it to the surface. So then we can just move this back here, like so. Blah. <laughs> Good, I'm glad I'm not the only one who uh, gets a little bit tripped up by array mesh. And it's not an array mesh issue, it's a, it's a me issue. Uh, I need to use it more. Cool. So I hope that uh, explained a little bit on the match maker. Now match mover, I'm not sure what that is, but that's the matchmaker stuff. Cool. Hey, Blands, thanks for showing up. Yeah, exactly. So any any of that uh, fancy stuff. In fact, another thing you can do uh, as far as, and we, we kind of went over this too. If you want to take, uh, let's load up. I like using this guy. I'm going to go to my CG. No, 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 not my CG. My Gemini. Wait for that to spin up here. Male, full body. All right. So one, one thing we went over a while ago, let's go ahead and revisit this a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and, you know what? I like having those eyeballs in there. I'm going to delete lower. I'm going to merge these down. That's under subtool merge. I'm just going to take his whole body out. I think the easiest way for me to do that, I'm going to do select lasso, just kind of simplify this. I don't want Zebra to crash on me. Go ahead and delete hidden. And then I'm going to do a... Oh, we got perspective turned on. All right, delete hidden. Um, you can just do a close holes. If you want a, a slice cut and a close holes, you can use your trim, and that'll go ahead and trim that, and then close holes for you. It doesn't close holes doesn't work in a mirrored sense. I'm going to do a quick mirror and weld, and then hit F. So this will be our head here. F. Okay. So uh, you know what? Another thing, if I'm just going to be working on this head, I'm going to go down here to deformation, just hit unify so that it's right down smack dab in the center of my world at a ZBrush primitive scale and we're good to go. So one thing you can do if you want to like stamp somebody's head to something, let's say, you can use this. So you can go to alpha, uh, you can grab doc and you can make uh, a height map out of this. Now if you wanted to do like a slight three quarter, 
we can go, we can kind of position him here. And I'm going to go back to my simple brush and we'll switch and we'll go grab our MRGBZ grabber. And I'm just going to grab the height information of his head at a three quarter view, like so. And now I'm going to go into a cylinder here. And we can scale it down this way. And let's make this a little bit more friendly. So what I'm going to do is say make poly mesh 3D. I'm going to go to you can go to the poly group menu and I'm going to do group by normals. And then let's see if I can't just like Z remesh double. There we go. I just wanted to get more geometry kind of along that uh, surface there. Um, and now what I can do if I want to get those poly groups back, actually this will be fine I think. That'll work fine. Let's go ahead and just do a slight so we're going to crease edge loop complete. So we're going to crease these corners just a little bit here. We're going to make like a coin. And now when we hit D for our dynamic preview, and that's just under here, your geometry dynamic subdiv here. We're kind of making a coin. Uh, if you want to here, you can go ahead and crease these edges here as well. Oops. Shift D if you're having a hard time. There we go. And if you want to also, you can slide these things. So you can go over here and you can like slide edge loop complete. Slide that forward here. Okay, so we've got kind of a coin going here. Oops, looks like I I messed something up here. Shift D, might have, uh, let's go ahead and slide this first and then crease edge loop complete. There we go. I don't know what I hit, but I hit something. Okay, so we've got this here. Now, if these are getting a little too crispy for you, what you can do is kind of play with your dynamic and your crease levels here. So your smooth subdivision levels will crank this up to three. Crease levels will turn that down to two, and that'll keep them creased up until the second one, and then uncrease. That'll kind of soften those edges a little bit. If that's not enough, smooth subdivision of four, crease level of three. There we go. Now, if we like this coin look that we're getting, uh, we can go ahead and apply that geometry here. So if I apply that, we're going to get real subdivisions here. So now we're working with 263,000. Um, if you want to go ahead and put like ridges on the side of that coin here, what I might do, I'm going to go into transform here and we're going to activate symmetry across the Y and I'm just going to crank that radial count up to 100. So now what you can do, one thing you can do is you can hold down um, shift. Now this is something new that's in 4R8P2. If you go under stroke, you're going to see you have lazy mouse turned on. If you turn that off and then you hold down shift, that's going to con allow you to um, conform to a straight line. I use that all the time. Uh, so you can hold down alt and shift and just kind of push this back. And I kind of dig those uh, little ridges out. Or you can just go into your clip brush as well. Or you can do maybe clip circle. And you can just do hold down alt and kind of clip back. There you go kind of clip those in a little bit. So you got kind of a coin thing going. Now we want to apply that face to this coin here. So let's go to our standard brush. Or I suppose we just throw it to a chisel. Eh, we'll go into standard brush. We'll go into clone and we'll do a drag rec stroke. And then we'll go to our alpha with our three quarter head turn. I'm going to go out of X symmetry. And then as I drag this off, let's go ahead and do focal shift at negative 100, crank our Z intensity up a bit. And now we can just do our little coin head here. An alternative to that, and you can play around with your Z intensity as well. Um, an alternative to that is to use DynaMesh as well as, I think there was something else you could do. I'm trying to think. You could also have a little bit more fun too. Let's go back into our standard brush here. Let's, let's, okay, okay, okay. I have something we can do. Um, let me look up something really quickly. Oh, there we go. Okay, so, um, so we've got this here, and we've got a coin going. We're going to do some sculpting. We're going to put a head on there, and also what we're going to do is do some text and some bend arc stuff. I think that'll be good. So uh, if we want to add a little bit more detail to this, what we can do is go into standard brush, and we'll go back into activate symmetry radial count with the standard brush here, and then you just hold down alt, and you can kind of pull this into a circle if you want to, and also you can go in here and turn your lazy mouse back on. Uh, the lazy radius is a really small value, so if you crank that up, that's where you'll get kind of the smoother fall off here, and then you can hold down Alt and kind of push in. So you can kind of play around with that a little bit. You can also feel free to go in here and smooth, 
like so. Um, and we'll just pull up a ridge right here as well. Uh, there's a million different ways to do this. You could have started out with this shape here, and then uh, you could subdivide up a cylinder, and then you could, you know, just basically Z model all of this stuff if you want to. Um, this one's a little bit more freeform. Uh, you might run into an issue where you need to kind of fill this in. So that in that instance, I might fill hole or do a like a spherender kind of fill, so you can get this kind of geometry going on in the middle, so that it's nice for when you drag an alpha onto it. And also, if you want to just make these both the same side, um, you can go over here and we could do a mirror and weld in the Z axis. Uh, let's go ahead and delete lower here so we can do a mirror and weld in the Z. Oh, wait, what axis are we even working on here? Okay, so I'm Y up. You know what? I always want to be Z forward, so I'm going to hold down Shift, go out of X symmetry, and I'm just going to snap this forward. And now, if we do a mirror and weld across the Z. Turn the floor off here. There we go. So now both sides are the same here. So that'll be our coin. And we can scale that down just a little bit. Uh, for the text, let's go ahead and just type out some text here. So I'm going to go into, let's go out of edit mode, hit control and clear my canvas, go grab this poly mesh star. And we're going to Z plugin here. And we're going to go into our text. 3D vector shape, and we'll say new text, and we'll call this the, uh, what's a good coin? Fraternite Liberté, Australia, George Washington, Mark Twain, there's a lot of Canada, all sorts of stuff. So, okay, so we'll call this the, um, want to give this something I can bend around. So we're going to go ahead and say, uh, what, what, what do we want here? That's fine. So we've got this here, and if you go to your subtools here, you're going to see we have our text, and we also have our star here. So if we go ahead and go to delete, uh, we can get rid of that. And you can also make all sorts of changes in here. So if we go into our poly frame, you're going to see uh, if you turn adaptive off and on, it's going to uh, add more geometry here if you need that. Uh, I'm going to go with the less geometry option here. You can also change uh, the resolution and the bevel on here. So if you crank that bevel up, that'll go ahead and put in a slight bevel, and then you can change the bevel resolution up, and then you can either curvature that out or curvature that in. Um, this kind of stuff I don't think I'm going to need here. So I'm going to just change that bevel down to zero. Uh, you can also change the spacing, which I think is okay. And... Um, Yes, we're going to make some Z coins here, but I think that'll be okay. So if I want to kind of slightly curve that, and let's go back in here, let's go to edit text. I want to make it a little bit more wordy. So when I go to wrap it around, if I want to wrap around like half the coin, it'll give me a little bit more. So there we go. So we've got this here, and now we can take this text, and we'll go back to our coin here, and we can go ahead and append that text. There it is. So now this one here, and in order to get this down to this, the correct size, again, I can just go down here to the deformation and just hit unify. And now it's gonna throw it right in the middle of our world, and make it that size. So we can go up here and we can kind of position this out front just a tad. If we want to make this thicker, we can just use the gizmo to kind of pump up the jam a little bit. And then we'll go over here to our trusty bend arc. And we don't want to twist it, we want to bend it this way. And let's go ahead, and I don't want to bend it that much. Because if we go through here, it's going to bend in an arc quite. Um, quite a bit here. So I'm going to move this down just a little bit. And if we just want to bend it like so, I wonder if we need to scale this down. Three hundred and sixty degrees. Let's say we want to bend it maybe about that much. And now I'm going to go in here to our deformer here and we're going to say 
x divides fine, y divides are fine. I want to make this parallel across this axis here. So as I move this one, this side should move. I'm going to hold down control. Oops, I forgot I had that in there. Move this in, and now both sides of these will move at the same time. Okay, so now that we have this text in here, we can decide, do I want it to bump out or bump in? Uh, if we wanted to bump in, I would probably use it just a live Boolean and then do a union mesh. So for instance, I would t make this a subtractive mesh over here. And then when I turn on my live Boolean, go to transparency mode, and we go ahead and accept that. And now if I kind of push this in, you're going to see we can kind of dig that text in like so. Um, we can go ahead and leave that as is. We can go back up here. And another thing we can do is we can do a live Boolean of the head. So we talked about doing the brush with the standard, with the drag rect here. See, so oh, that's what I wanted to show you. So you can use this to kind of drag this head out. Um, another thing you can do is if you like this alpha and you want a little bit more control, you can go into BT, transpose smart mask, drop your alpha in here. And now when you hold down Let's hit Y so we go into transpose mode. Uh, if you hold down control, you can drag this out. And it looks like I need to, hmm, it's coming in a little bit fat. I wonder if I needed to make this square. So what you can do with the transpose smart mask is you can mask something out and then you can reposition it and move it around if you want to. So that just gives you a little bit more control here. I wish I could, okay, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go to the brush alpha. And I'm going to tweak this just a little bit. I'm going to rotate that. So now I can rotate it like this. And then I can skinny his head out just a little bit. So you can position his head first. Control tap to invert. And now you can, uh, it looks like I picked up a little bit of stuff. Go through here. Uh, and now you can just inflate through that mask like so. And that'll just, again, give you, just give you a little bit more control. Um, if you want ultimate control, we can use live Boolean. So I'm going to take this male head we have here, and I'm going to append that. So I'm going to take this coin we're working on here. I'm going to go over here to append our head. And again, this head is just out of control. So I'm going to go over to Deformation Unify. Everything's the same size here. I'm going to hit Y to go back to our gizmo. Hold on Shift, and we'll snap that. We can either do it to the side or the three-quarter if we want to. And then if I hold down Alt and reset that, we'll go ahead and scale this down. And then if you just scale this to get a relief, you can just scale that down and make sure it's embedded enough. And this should give you, so here's like low relief, here's high relief. We'll get some low relief here, and we'll just kind of position these. Like so, eh, like this maybe. Of course, if you dynamesh this, you're going to have an undercut here. Not ideal. You could also use vector displacement if you want. Um, so this one might not work that great for a three-quarter shot, although that works fine. So what we could do, okay, let's do this. I don't need to see the back of his head here, so I'm going to hold down Control shift and we'll go ahead and clip this back. So what we could do is we could uh, use, use our Z. Uh, we could probably use our matchmaker brush too, maybe. Uh, but we can use our Z project brush. So we're going to hold down Control. And I'm going to mask lasso right around here. And I wonder if I can just project this straight out. Or you know what? Let's just do this. So we've got all of this going on in here. I got the head here. I've got the coin selected in the head here. I'm going to go to B, Z. Project brush, turn off RGB. We're gonna just gonna Z sub. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna hold down Alt, and I'm just going to use my Z project brush to just project this three quarter head straight up. And then I'm going to project that back down. Is that working? Yeah, kind of. There we go. And then we can just project that back down. So projecting up, holding down Alt. Now this is also camera based. So you could use the matchmaker brush as well, I suppose. Um, I'm just going to go through here and kind of brush this in. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's turn live boolean off. Maybe that's okay. Live boolean is doing something weird. Good to know. So it's, it was doing it, but it was also acting a little bit weird. 
Okay, there we go. So with live Boolean off, it seems to be working a little bit better or a little bit more predictably. So I'm just pulling this geometry straight out. So if I go into solo mode here, you're going to see that's the uh, that's what we're getting. Oh, you know what we should do? Just play it safe. Let's take this mesh here that we have and go into morph target. We're going to store a morph target. So as we're changing this, we could also be adding this to a layer. Let's do that too. <laughs> so we're going to store a morph target. And then we're also going to go to our layers here. Geez, where are we at? Geometry, layers, and we're going to make a new layer. So as we oops, start pulling this out, we can go through and have a little bit more control. It's all about non-destructiveness. So we're just going to pull this out here. And you could DynaMesh those two meshes together like we talked about, but it had a slight undercut, so that wasn't going to work very well. Um, I think that'll work fine. So let's go ahead and like smooth some of these edges out here. And again, if we want to play with this a little bit more, um, if you had to do a little bit of cleanup, like if you accidentally grabbed BZP, if you accidentally grabbed some of this coinage here, uh, at this point you could go to BM Morph Brush, BMO, and then you could just morph this back out. So you don't need to worry about that. Uh, so that's why we store that morph target. As far as the layer here, if you take this layer, uh, you can just go through here and then you can start dividing this up or down here. So you can like embed this if you want to, or just change that uh, intensity of it. But I think the full intensity, or you can over crank it. You can go down here and like, or way underdo it if you want to. So it gives you a little bit more leeway, uh, but I think that's fine. So go out of solo mode here. We've got our layer. I'm gonna go ahead and hit bake all. And this morph target we don't need anymore. I'll delete that morph target. This head we don't need anymore, so I can go ahead and delete that. So any number of ways you want to accomplish this, you can do that. And then this one here, I'm going to make that additive. So when we do the light boolean, it'll bump out. Um, so there you go. We made a coin. Oh, you know what? We should have turned on back face masking on that. So we'll fix this real quick. Let's really quickly go to the back of this coin. Or we could just, I suppose it might be easy just to do another quick mirror and well across the Z here. That'll fill that out. But um, what I should have done, like I was doing, uh, if, if you're working on a mesh that's thin, and let's say we got the clay tubes brush and we have a brush over here and we're and we're sculpting along here and then you go to the back and it's pulling through make sure you have d -d -d, auto masking uh, back face masking turned on so as I'm sculpting through here it's not touching the back um, but I've already touched the back so again like I was gonna do is just do a quick mirror and weld and then if I wanted to I could just mask this out and clip it back um, I could also possibly just go in here with like the clay tubes brush with back face masking on and just fill this back in here. And then um, let's see. Because I really would want to just use the clip brush here. You can also go through here and uh, use what's it called? The radial symmetry here. Activate symmetry in the Y, radial, yeah, let's do Z. There we go. And we just use our H polish brush and we just H polish this thing down to a flat surface again. Uh, I'm probably doing a number on my geometry back here, uh, but it shouldn't affect too much. And then if I want to, I can just hold down control and I can mask, oops, let's do mask pin. I can just really quickly mask this back area out, invert that, and then we can just clip this back to just a flat surface here. Although, if you're going to be clipping like this, you don't need to have X symmetry around, because what's going to do is do X symmetry uh, in a hundred little degrees around. So we'll let that spin. Um, cool, thanks for showing up, everybody. Uh, matchmaker... Uh, it, it's kind of just it's kind of really dependent on what you're end up what you're going to end up making. Let's turn off X symmetry. So with X symmetry off, when you go to clip, it'll work a lot faster. Um, and then you can go through here and we'll just activate symmetry again. We'll smooth this out. And you know what? Let's go to smooth stronger. There we go. And then uh, feel free to stamp whatever you want, or like you you know. 
Oh, and then when you hold down shift, <sighs> make sure you go to back face masking so we don't uh, destroy everything that we've just done on the front side. So remember, back face masking, everybody. So we've got our coin here, uh, and we've got this. So let's go ahead and make this our live Boolean, uh, which will be just adding these two together. So turn on your live Boolean, and then go down here to geometry. Um, let's go to subtool here. And then we're going to go to Boolean. Dynamics of division we don't really have turned on, so just make Boolean mesh. There we go. And then we've got our U mesh here. And oh, so it was pulled through, so it's going to do some nasty stuff. All right, let me fix that again really quick. So this one, I'm going to do a little bit of a different technique. I'm going to take this here. I'm going to hold down Control. I'm going to go to back face masking, and I'm just going to mask these bad areas here in this circle. Hit OK. Can tap Control. Oh man, it really, really wants to. Okay. Mirror and wall across the Z. Hold down control. Mask these areas where we have a head that we don't want it. Control tap that. And then we can grab our clip curve and we'll just clip this back. Uh, wait a minute. I want to make sure I don't have symmetry turned on. I'll let that spin. Cool. Uh, yeah, if you want my custom UI, again, that's just on the very bottom of my Gumroad page, my cube brush page. Um, and it's super easy to customize. In fact, if you go to my uh, YouTube channel here on the playlist, go to Intro to ZBrush Part 2. Go to Intro to ZBrush Part 2. And uh, so let's turn off x -symmetry. And now we can clip this back. Go to Intro to ZBrush Part 2, and that'll walk you through um, all of that. Come on, just clip this back. Do I have something weird going on here? What is going on? Okay. Let's do this. Visibility, so we can go to select rectangle. And if you want to change that to a circle shape, just change select rectangle to a circle. And I'm just going to do visibility on this side here. Okay, so I have some nasty stuff going on in my geometry. You know what we could do? Let's take this, and to clear that out, let's turn our blur off. Let's change our Dynamesh. Uh, change this to a Dynamesh resolution. I'm going to crank that up just a bit, turn off blur. And when we Dynamesh this, we'll get uh, just a nice envelope here. So now any of that weirdness that was going on should be gone here. So now, again, we can just go ahead and select visibility on this side here, like so. And now hold down Control-Shift. And then we'll just clip this back to a flat plane. So a lot of this could be avoided had I just um, planned that out a little bit better. <laughs> and also remembered about back face masking. Um, let's go ahead and smooth that out. So anyway, here's our coin. And now when we do our union mesh, it should be just fine. So let's take this one. And we'll go ahead and do our union mesh again. So we've got our live Boolean turned on. And then make our Boolean mesh. Here. There's our union mesh. Um, if we want to kind of soften that out a little bit, I am going to go ahead. Let's just crank up. Let's just make this a dyna mesh here. And now I can go through here. And just run a, just a slight smooth on that. You could also use your deformation smooth to kind of run that. And now if we want to, let's really quickly go into... Um, let's see, render, external render, key shot. We'll throw it in the key shot real quick. Cool. All righty. Any other streaming topics here? Oh, and then whenever you have your mouse on another monitor, it'll default to that side. So here, just play around with some metals here. And I'm using 88%, so I shouldn't do anything weird with my OBS. Okay, so we've got metal here. Uh, what kind of metal do we want? Precious metals. we got gold, 24 karat gold here. Shiny 24 karat gold. Eighteen karat gold. And we'll do 24 karat gold. And let's change this environment a little bit here. 
go to interiors. Now we double click this. Let's go to our environment. We'll turn on a color environment. Knock this down. I mean, I guess if we were doing like an, I guess studio might be a better choice if we're trying to do like a commercial. Buy the 24 karat gold. This just gives you a little bit more of a, makes your super shiny stuff a little bit more readable. And we'll go ahead and go to our lighting environment here. We'll do a product render. I guess everything else is fine. Uh, you could also do your own lighting if you wanted to. So if you go here to like edit, add geometry, plane, you can right click this, do the move part, and we'll go ahead and rotate this around. And we can see if this will work any better. So we go up here, click OK. And actually, you know what? Change my mind, let's move part. We'll go ahead and scale this up. And now we can go into the uh, materials here. Let's go to an area light. We'll drop that on there. And with this properties here, let's go ahead and change that to watts. Okay, so we've got our area light here um, rendering our object. If we go over here, we can double click this. We can say not visible to camera, but it'll still light our object here. And we can also go to our environment here. If we take our brightness down in our environment, now just that uh, plane is uh, lighting this. So we can go to our scene here. And we can say move this part here and kind of change this on the fly. Like so. And then go back to our materials here and crank this down just a little bit. So it's like having a 140 watt plane just sitting out there in front of that. Uh, coin there. Uh, so you can do a little bit of this and you can also bring a little bit of your environment back if you want to just start uh, lighting that as well. Or, you know what, we can just turn our plane off and go back to our environment lighting and just choose whichever one floats your boat here. And if you want to rotate this environment around, hold down control and left mouse drag and that'll kind of rotate that around just a bit. And also, let's go to our materials here. Polish nickel, let's go to titanium. I want to get some cool reflections here. I don't want to go too crazy. You can also change the roughness of this uh, if you want to kind of satin it out just a little bit. And then again, control drag to kind of reposition this um, environment map. Ooh, that's moody. That's a moody one. You can also go back in here to your environment. We can crank that brightness up quite a bit. Something like that. <laughs> Is there any reason you haven't upgraded the Keyshot 7? Um, I'm lazy. Haven't had time. Uh, that would be the real reason. Uh, I need to do that soonish. Maybe I'll do that today. Um, okay, so we've got that. We can go ahead and uh, let's go file, save as, coin. Okay, uh, I guess we can go ahead and we can you can pause this if you want to just continue working or go make changes and throw it back over. Um, but I think we're okay, so I'm just going to kill that here. So there was our pixel extra zebras coin. There was our Victorian. Uh, thing we did. Now when it bridged all the way around, it bridged everything except for this one, but this is an easy fix. So we can go through here and we can just do bridge, two polys here, to here, and then I'll go ahead and bridge those. Hit control W, make this all in poly group. You can also probably group by normals at this point under your poly group menu, and then you could crease by poly group. And now when we hit D, that'll go ahead and give us our dynamic subdivisions, uh, but it's a little too crispy. So this is what we're going to play again like we did earlier with our crease level. 
I guess I should do it here. Um, geometry, dynamic, smooth subdivisions up to three, crease levels of the two, and that'll go ahead and give us a nice uh, little fall off or even crease level of one maybe. Perfect. Uh, so now what we can do is grab our male head here, go to append this thing here, and now we can just unify this one, I think. Yeah. And now in order to get this in the middle, I'm going to hold down Alt and repositions to the center, reset, and now we can kind of go through here, scale this down. Now he's very royal. Now again, these are just dynamic uh, subdivisions here, so if you do Shift D, you're going to see you're working with the low resolution mesh. It's not super low, but it's a little lower than uh, what it's previewing, so feel free to go in here with your move brush and kind of, you know, move this stuff around, or use your deformers uh, if you want to. I would maybe even turn on X to go across X symmetry here. If you want to move it symmetrically, let's go ahead and preferences, edit, turn off a line cursor to surface. There we go. Something like this. Um, let's go and turn perspective here. And let's see. So in here, if we want to render in here, we can just turn off key shot. And now we can just render in ZBrush. Uh, ZBrush has a lot of really cool uh, rendering abilities. One thing I was doing, I really fell in love with, with uh, doing concept stuff, is using the Poblander materials that we went over. If you go to my channel here and you scroll down, you're going to see... Uh, ZBrush Guide Stylized Rendering. So if you go to zbrushguides.com, that'll take you to a PDF with all these materials you can download. Um, and I also do the video tutorials on that. I think there's 15 videos in there. You can kind of go through there and play with these. Uh, but one that I really like is, uh, well, first we need to make sure we don't overwrite our Metcap Gray. So I'm going to go to Droplet here. And then we'll go to the Super Shader. And then we'll go over here to our material here. And I'm going to turn on S3. So you can kind of do a pen and ink render if you want to. And then uh, when you do a BPR render, it'll go ahead and cast a shadow, which you can control separately. Uh, so in this case, you can go over here to the light. And you can move this light around here. It's not going to change, it's not going to affect the um, matte cap per se. There's, I think there's one that's not a matte cap in here. Uh, but what we're doing is affecting where the shadow is going to fall. So as that shadow falls on this side, you can go into your render properties and you can go into your shadow properties and we say, oh, I don't want the strength to be that much. Um, so we got render properties, we got shadows turned on, we got our shadow here. And now as we hit BPR, we'll go ahead and lighten that up. So you can kind of do two different versions of that. Um, but anyway, there's kind of a creepy render. Go back to our matcap right here. And uh, is there a way to bridge two separate objects together with part of the object being bridged to hidden, um, maybe not. You might need to show visible. So we have a sphere here. Go into edit, and we're going to append a cylinder. And then if we have this, oh shoot, keep forgetting. Make polymesh 3D. Now append another primitive here, which I guess should be a. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We'll just throw a cylinder in here. We'll go ahead and merge these down. So now if I want to bridge, uh, usually to have a little bit more control, you can bridge two polys. So you can go like bridge two polys here to here, but that doesn't give you a whole lot of control. So what I, what I prefer to do is do like uh, delete a single poly or even better, I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to like take all these here and delete and then I'm going to delete that poly and now when I bridge two holes that'll give me a little bit more control so I can bridge two holes and I got a lot of uh, options in here and it doesn't even matter if these edges match up or not well maybe it does <laughs> uh, let's see give it a second let's try that again so we're going to try the bridging two holes which should work I haven't had a problem with that I think I've took it through the paces quite a bit with the stuff we were working on. Um, but at the very least, we should be able to bridge two holes and then also see if it'll work with something that doesn't have all full visibility on the object. There's a workaround for that if it doesn't work. And then we can go to quick save if we want to grab any of that. But I think we're okay. So again, sphere. Uh, let's, let's change the resolution on this one a little bit. 
So we'll go to initialize here. Let's go to h divides of like 24, v divides of 24. Hit make polymesh 3D. And then we'll go to subtool, append, cylinder. Now, let's see if this crashes again. Just for science. Go ahead and merge these down. Now, again, like it, what it should do is if I go over here to delete a single poly here to here, and then if I'm not bridging two whole, or if I'm not bridging two polys, but I'm bridging two holes, it gives me a lot more options. So we can go to this edge to this edge, we can pull this out. We have interactive curvature, uh, all that good stuff. Um, but it should also be able to do something like this as well. If it doesn't, there we go. Yeah, it seems to be having a problem. Hmm. Somebody submit a support ticket for me. Usually that was pretty rock solid. And Zebra's 4R7, if I remember correctly. Seems to be uh, not playing so nice anymore. Anyway, watch out for that. Uh, but as far as bridging, let's do a simpler bridge this time. Um, let's go ahead and kill that there. Yeah, I don't have. I mean, Zebra Spray has been pretty rock solid for me, uh, but apparently I don't do a whole lot of bridging between. Now I did go ahead and save our recovered tool here, which is nice. So we didn't really lose anything, um, but now I'm afraid to kind of bridge those two shapes in there. So to keep this simpler, what I'm going to do is let's say uh, if we go to delete single poly, so we can certainly bridge at least two similar things now, right? Bridge two holes. Oh wait, I'm doing bridge edges. We want to bridge two holes. There we go. So here to here, and we can kind of do that interactive curvature there. Uh, now, were you asking, would it allow us to bridge if like part of this is hidden? That I don't know. Oops. No, it doesn't. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> Apparently, um, bridge to oh separate objects together with part of the object being bridged to hidden. Um, you can't if they're separate. Okay, now I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, if these are separate. If we go ahead and do a uh, split group split, so we've got a subtool here. You can go to split to similar parts. Uh, group split if you want to. Let's bring everything back. There we go. We'll do a quick group split. Yeah. So there's no. Yeah, you can't bridge between two subtools that aren't together. But um, what is this thing? Oh, that was an uh, edge. I must have bridged. Didn't notice. Okay, so uh, but what you can do is you can merge those down temporarily and say, okay, now I want to bridge. And if you have part of this hidden, doesn't really matter. It doesn't seem. So we can bridge two holes here. It's like, okay, this is the bridge that I want. Bring everything back if you want to, and then um, only hold that control shift and grab both of these, and then this one, and then we can just do like a split hidden, and now we've got separate again. If you needed to bridge two separate objects with one partly hidden. Um, oh yeah, same object, different polygroups, yeah, so uh, that should work. Uh, I did not get my new computer yet, but I think that's on its way really soon. When sending mesh to key shot, mesh shows up faces opposite of ZBrush. Any help with that? So what that might be, let's do a test. So if we got this object here and we have double turned off, you're going to see, here's our display properties. Um, double is turned off because you can see right through it. If you turn double off, on and then you flip, you're not going to see any change. But if we go into like our deformation inflate and we inflate it up and it starts deflating, that means that's a pretty good indication that your geometry is flipped. So if we go over here and turn double off, you're going to see it's flipped. Um, off the top of my head, if we have double on and it is actually flipped, let's see what that does in the render. Although Keyshot should render, I don't know. Let's see. I've never actually do, done that. So let's go throw this over in the Keyshot. Now this one should be a pretty quick bridge there. And uh, it seems to be rendering correctly. I wonder if I could go into edit geometry here. Edit normals. Show vertex normals, show face normals. Oh, so I can do the softness on them, but not like flip them in a magic angle, calculate vertex normals. 
Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. You can edit normals in here, but I think it's just like edge softness. So you can see we softened um, these edges in here, and then these ones aren't softened. So that could be a way around having to subdivide your model up a bunch. Uh, but as far as the double sided not working, because in ZBrush here, okay, let's turn double off. I don't know why. I mean, that should be a pretty obvious thing, but let's see what that does. I didn't even bring it in. Huh. Okay. So we have double turned off. We've got these two tools here. Let's go to render key shot. I am just an experimenting fool today. No, that seems to work fine. Hmm. I can't reproduce that. Key shot, key shot, mesh show up, faces opposite. Oh, um... Are you talking about like when you bring it into Keyshot and it's turned back around this way? Um, apparently, Keyshot defaults to like a negative Z. So, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure there's a way you might be able to set up like a default Keyshot whenever it opens. I'm not sure if you can, but possibly you might be able to sh do a, uh, a Keyshot where the default camera is on the opposite side. And then it'll show you uh, the right side. Is that what you're asking? But um, yeah, this seems to be working fine regardless. Go out of mode here. All right, let me look at my how much time we got left. Twenty-seven minutes. Um, okay, let's load this up. Let's go into streaming pickle Rick laser cannon here. So we got our laser cannon we've been working on, and we've got our. Uh, battery already created that we worked on. Uh, if I want to, I can start positioning. I can start placing this battery in here. I think he takes two batteries. Let's go ahead. I'm going to launch up Quadro, K-U-A-D-R-O, if you want to use that reference viewer. It's my favorite reference viewer. Um, and that has my, I think the last thing I used was Pickle Rick, so I should just load up my reference on the other screen here. There we go. So now I've got my Pickle Rick reference, like so. Um, if you missed that, by the way, let's go ahead and open him up. Do I have the latest version of him? I'm not sure if I do. So on my channel, we live stream the making of this guy. Um, yeah, this isn't the final version. But, uh, and actually I think this needs to be rotated back. If I remember correctly, let's turn off perspective here. Go ahead and scale this up just a bit. Something like that. So um, I did a quick uh, render of him. If you missed that, go to my YouTube channel here. So here's, I just uploaded the Batman Cal and the Soft Serve Ice Cream. We did that on my channel just so I could have them um, saved, uh, archived, and a little bit more organized. And then if you scroll down, oh, you know what? He's not in a playlist here, so I'm going to go to videos. If you go down here, you're going to see here's a Pickle Rick block out. So this will walk you through the entire process of blocking this guy out. And it's pretty is a pretty quick one. He's a pretty simple dude. So there's that. <laughs> I am I'm constantly trying to stay ahead of the curve here. So we've got our battery here and then this battery. Let's move this over. So yeah, it looks like there's one battery that goes in here. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this around. Let's turn perspective off. I'm going to hold down Alt. We're going to recenter this pivot here, and then hold down Shift, and then we'll just push the position this here. And I'm going to go X to go across X symmetry, and then scale this down. And he should. This thing should fit snug in here. Now we matched this to match an actual, I think, double A battery which may or may not be exactly what we're looking for. So I might have to fudge that a little bit, but for now, we'll just go ahead and position that right in there. Something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on dynamic subdivisions for this as well. And we'll go ahead and do our crease tolerance here. And it looks like in the front here, these are a little bit more rounded. So let's go ahead and do crease with our edge, hold down Alt. 
and then we'll just put in a control loop here, insert single edge loop, and we'll just do a control. We don't have to do a super sharp one, um, but I do want to kind of have that kind of round off just a bit here. Uh, for this one down here, we can go ahead and crease this. And again, let's just play around a little bit with our uh, crease levels here. So I'm going to go maybe uh, smooth subdivisions up to four, crease levels down to three. And now we'll get a nice, uh, nicer bevel along here. Uh, same thing for this one here. I put a little bit more thickness than the, what they have. Uh, if I wanted to decrease that, I can just go through here with our Q mesh, polygroup all, and then I'm going to hold down shift and just push along that surface normal. Um, but we'll go ahead and do a quick crease dynamic, and that'll give us our nice smooth creases along here and along the back. I think that'll work fine. Um, these corners here, I'm going to go ahead and just manually go through and we'll just crease this edge and this edge here. So now when we hit D, that'll give us that shape, and then I'm just going to go back through here again. We'll do smooth so divot 4, crease level of 3, and then I'll knock back uh, that a little bit. Now, you're going to see this bottom edge here is losing, uh, needs a little bit more control here. So we can go ahead and do an insert single edge loop. I'm doing shift D and D. If you hold down shift, you're going to see how it's uh, see how it's um, building in that shape here. If you hold down shift, that whatever you're nearest, it'll go ahead and snap it to a straighter line because that's bottom is straighter. And we'll hit D, and that'll go ahead and sharpen that uh, bottom up a little bit. Um, if it's too sharp, we can go ahead and do a slide edge loop complete. We can just back that off just a bit, like so. And then on the bottom here, if you wanted to, we'll do Shift D, hold down Alt, and we'll paint these faces here. And then we can just do an inset polygroup all region. And now we'll just pull these in. So there we go. That's what pull is a little bit more. There we go. Um, and then we'll just do our run our crease again. Something like that. All righty. Uh, we got our main body here. Now these things have panels on them. So I'm wondering, should I inset those? Yeah, let's do that. So the cool thing is, since these all have separate polygroups here, and it looks like they're all unique, it should be a simple matter of going in here to inset polygroup all region, and we'll just inset this a bit like so. And if I just tap this one, it'll inset the same amount. And same thing with Q mesh. If I want to like Q mesh polygroup all, I'll Q mesh this back a bit, and then I'll just tap, and that'll be the same value. And then we'll go back here to our crease turn on dynamic and let's go ahead and uh, crease these edges here so we'll go ahead and crease edge like so and then again we'll play with our crease level a little bit here so we'll do like smooth subdivision of four crease level of three not kind of soften that out just a little bit um, again if you don't want it that soft here uh, let's see if we can just do bevel let's do a bevel edge loop complete um, doesn't quite go out as far as I want. Okay, we'll do insert. Insert single edge loop, and we'll just tighten up these corners here a little bit. Oh, that seems to be working fine. Hmm. We could also do a Q grid here. So instead of doing a dynamic, let's just do it here. So geometry, uh, dynamic subdivision. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So if we're going to do Q grid, I'm going to go to insert single edge loop, and we're going to get rid of those and this. And then when you go to dynamic, we have smooth but Q grid off. So I'm going to turn smooth down to zero, Q grid up to like one, and then you, or two, you can change your coverage here. So if I turn this down, you're going to see on boxy objects, that seems to work uh, pretty well. So we can do, and then you can also do Q grid and smooth. So we do Q grid and then smooth. Um, you can kind of mix both of those things. You can also change it from a bevel to a bevel and chamfer, or just a chamfer if you want to. Um, We'll just kind of Q-grid that down just a bit. Let's do Q-grid of three. Something like that. So that might be a better option. Um, and again, that's just dynamic. So if I do Shift-D, we go back to our regular geometry here. So if I wanted to, I could go in here to Q-mesh polygroup all, hold down Shift, and I can make that more or less uh, thickness. And then I can turn D back on, and that'll be just fine. Um, so we got this here, we got this here. Let's go ahead and round this out. So this bottom piece here looks a little bit more rounded than what I have. I'm going to move this out just a little bit as well. And one way to round that out is if I go through here, I can go to Bevel, Edge Loop Complete, 
So we just put out a big fat bevel here, and then we can go to insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation. Then we can just pull that back out and just kind of round that off a little bit. Um, however, let's say I do want to have this creased at the bottom here, so I'm going to run my crease tolerance here, and then just through here I'll just do a crease edge loop complete. Now if we want to have this hose actually get plugged in here, let's give it a little bit more room. I think that'll work fine. Uh, I am going to go through here. Let's go ahead and just say clip this back. So this is going to be my uh, hole here. I'm going to go to insert, uh, insert single edge loop. Hold down alt and get rid of this one. Let's go ahead and do uncrease all. It's under your geometry crease menu. And now we can go to inset flat island region. We can inset this a little bit, inset it a little bit more. Uh, we'll do polygroup island. And now I can do use Q mesh polygroup ball and just hold down shift and kind of push this back. And now when I do with my crease tolerance here, uh, that'll crease all those edges here. So now when I hit D, that'll give us that shape. And now we'll do like crease level of three, smooth it to a four. And just give us that kind of fall off there. So uh, that'll give us something a little bit more to play with. If I want to move this up, hold down control and then alt, and that'll mask all that. I can go ahead and snap to that unmatched mesh center, push that up and turn off dynamic for solo. There we go. If you ever, if you have dynamic for solo turned on, as you're moving around, it's going to just automatically solo out your selected subtool. So if you don't want that, just turn dynamic off. Uh, we've got our curve here. Go ahead and push this in here. Yeah, that's about right. Something like that. Um, we also have tape on here. Let's go ahead and Q-grid this shape here as well. So I'm going to go into my dynamic properties, turn off smooth, and we're going to do Q-grid of, yeah, two, and change that coverage maybe. That'll work fine. And again, hold on control alt, and we'll just push this up just a tad. This one's already pretty much settled. We'll move this up just a tiny bit here. Mash those together. That does look like it overhangs a bit, maybe not that much. So I'm going to tap this one, control alt, and I'll squeeze this in just a bit. And I'll squeeze this in just a bit as well. OK. What's this thing up here? Uh, OK, this is like a lens, little camera lens here. So we can kind of start modeling this out. Uh, it looks like it's got a little strap here. So let's model this camera lens thing out. So for that, uh, we've already got the size kind of dialed in. And in order to do that, all we did was go to like texture import and then reference. And then we grabbed where that reference is. Now we can go to texture, add that texture here. And then it's just a simple matter of kind of taking that scale and that opacity and matching your camera to that. Uh, this one is a little bit more orthographic, so I am able to just go through here and kind of, you know, match these two angles up. Uh, but everything's the right size-ish, so I can just kind of eyeball it. I don't really need to look at that. Uh, so now this little lens here, this is set back just a little bit. I am gonna, you know what, let's go to the center of this thing here, and I'm gonna push this out just a bit so it's a little bit closer and it also looks like this is a little bit wider as well. I have to kind of fudge some of this so those screws can kind of get in there. And then these ones all widen out. Again, um, if you go to the center here and you have X turned on, turn X off and then go snap to center and then turn X back on and that'll snap it to the surface center. These are a little bit wider the battery and it looks like this edge here should be dropped like this and also it looks like this should be a little closer to here so when we move those out we need to move this out now this battery needs to be scaled up to kind of fit all right little little changes here again just eyeballing uh, those and then these things here so these are where these uh, screws kind of go in uh, they look like they're about the same width they, they're kind of weird they kind of go up to here down to here um, I'm just gonna match those I'm gonna hold down alt and tap the top of this one and then I'm just gonna match the width here 
So now we'll do a really quick uh, crease tolerance here, dynamic, crease level of three, smooth level of four. And then I kind of match those up. Good enough. Okay, so back to our lens here. So our lens kind of overlaps a little bit. I'm going to, it looks like this needs to be chopped out just a little bit. I might just do that in a live Boolean, make my life a little bit easier here. So I'm going to hold down Control, Alt. I'm just going to push this back so it's kind of sitting in here. This is where the laser comes out. So uh, in order for that to happen, what we're going to do is we're going to do need to inset this and then also add a little bit of a bump, it looks like. So let's go ahead and bevel this back just a bit. So we've got a nice uh, little bevel here, and then it also has a little bit of a roundness. So insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation, and we'll kind of round that out just a bit. And now we can do is we can go to inset polygroup island. Now if I do polygroup all, it's going to want to inset all of these. So if I do island, it's just this one here. Now let's do this inset island, and we'll pull this in. So that's going to kind of be rounded out. Um, the other cool thing is sometimes I'll do like, a, you know, Q mesh, polygroup island, we'll just push it straight back. Um, but to get this to just render a little bit nicer, especially if you're going to be baking maps off of this for a game res, you're going to want to do inset um, here and then Q mesh this back. Uh, just so you can get a little bit of pushback so it's not so uh, straight back. Now, if you wanted to change that, you could go to slide edge loop complete and you could slide this if you wanted to, but I think that's fine. Uh, so we've got that. Now we need to make the lens. Let's go ahead and do our crease here, dynamic, and we'll also do a crease right along here as well. Now, if you notice, if we go into solo mode here and we start dynamic, at least subdividing this thing, and then do again do our crease level of three, smooth subdivide of four. Um, it can start doing a little bit of wacky stuff here. So you can go to insert single edge loop, and you can just add your control loops here and here if you want to kind of mitigate that a little bit. Okay, so uh, now we need to put the lens in there. The lens should be fairly easy because what we're going to do is we're just going to take QMesh Polygroup Island. Um, actually, you can you can hold down Control and pop off a copy of this and then QMesh this out and then dome this off and then push it back in. Uh, what might be easier is if I just duplicate this entire mesh off, go into solo mode, hold down Control Shift, delete hidden, and now QMesh this out and uh, if we get rid of this one, so I'm gonna control shift click to tap this. You're gonna see I have clip curve selected. Um, in order to invert this visibility, I have to use select rectangle. I can just switch temporarily over to that, hold that control shift, tap control, um, and that'll temporarily switch to this select rectangle here. So you can use that to your advantage. And now you can do close, convex hole, and now you can just pull this out here. Um, oops, we need to delete hidden first. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and now we can just kind of bulge that out to a lens like so. Uh, let's make this all one polygroup. And now we can do a crease polygroup. Uh, we'll turn on our dynamic, and it inherited the crease subdivision level, subdivision level three, smooth subdivision level four, so that should be fine. And now we know that fits right in there because we duplicated it off. And now we can just push this back. And if we want to make it a little more shallow, we can just scale this um, back a little bit. Let's go ahead and hold down Alt. There we go. So we can kind of just change the curvature of that on the fly. And we'll push that back just a little bit as well. Now, if we push it back, I mean, I guess it goes about that far. Uh, so we, if we want to, we can hold down, we can go into solo mode or transparency mode, Q mesh polygroup island, then hold down shift and just push that back along the surface normal there. And that'll just give us a little bit more breathing room there. Okay. So how are we doing on time? I got 15 minutes. So we're going to take this one here and this one looks like it has one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15. So about 20, I don't want to say 24, we'll say 18. I'm trying to keep it the same. Uh, this one might be 12. Let's say, let's split the difference. I'm going to go to my custom menu here. So I've got cylinders here that are like 12, 8, 16, 32. I'm thinking it might need a cylinder of 20. 20. Hmm. All right, we'll just make one real quick. Uh, let's go out of edit mode here, hit Control N, and we'll go into our cylinder here, cylinder 3D, go into edit mode, and I'm going to go to initialize, and we'll just make one that has 20. And V divides will just drag down. So we'll hey, make polymesh 3D, 
go to brush, create insert mesh, new. You don't have to do that, you can append it or whatever you wanna do. Uh, but just so I can go through and swap through that. Where am I at? There we go. Uh, I can hit W now. And uh, then I can go to my brush, insert, oops, brush, and then just grab this last one here. So now if I hit W and just touch this one, I'll go ahead and replace that one. Um, just to make sure I get this the right size, let's go ahead and duplicate this, duplicate that off. And now I can go into transparency mode. And we can just match this. So now this one will have 20 spans. And then we can delete our original. Okay, so it's not going to be, uh, I guess that'll be mirrored just fine. So that'll be a little bit closer to the reference here. And now we can uh, break these things off if we need to. Hmm, I'll think about that in a second. So what I'm going to do here is we can just do inset flat island region and we'll pull in some thickness here. Doesn't look like it's that thick. And then we just tap this back end here. And now we can go to QMesh Polygroup Island and we can just push that straight back. And that'll go ahead and connect those for us. And now we can just do, you know, our crease tolerance here with dynamic turned on. There we go. So we'll get our nice little shape like this. Um, it does go back there and it does look like it has like an inner ring here. So what I'm going to do is go to this one. We're going to insert a ring. Oops. I want to hold hit control to mask that. And then we're going to insert a ring here. And then we're going to play around with this. So hit shift D. So now we can go through here and change our S divides. I'm going to move that down. I can also just go through here and insert a single edge loop here. We'll hit W and let's pull this forward. So go out of solo mode here. It's kind of towards the back, but it's kind of not. It's kind of like right here. So let's go ahead and do um, split unmask points here. And we'll go ahead and uh, we'll hit D on both of these ones here. So this will fit right inside of here, but it also looks like it kind of just goes back. So what I'm going to do is hit Shift D, go to the side here, hold down Control, W, hold down Control, and just pull in an edge ring here. So we're just going to pull that so that it goes back here. It kind of also looks like it does something weird here. Not quite sure what, but if we hit D, uh, looks like we need to scale this down just a bit to get that to fit in there. Okay, so now that we have that, um, kind of depends on how you want to interpret that. That kind of tells me that that's a rounded shape in there, so I can keep this rounded. Um, if I want to, I can crease this here. And that did our crease levels here. Yeah, so that should be fine. So something like that maybe is what it's looking like to me. Not quite sure. See if I can find a better reference image of that. Uh, but something like that. And actually, it looks like it's out quite a bit more. Okay, let's hit Z to bring back our reference here. And if we match this up. Yeah, that's about right. Of course, to match this up, looks like that doesn't go back quite as far. But in order for it to touch that, it kind of needs to. So... Uh, we can kind of fudge in between that a little bit, maybe, so we can kind of split the difference. We'll pull this back, and then we'll also pull this back. Now we'll leave that up. Okay, so we just pull that back just a little bit here, and then we'll also move that back just a little bit. There we go. Now, to get those kind of uh, aperture rotator ring kind of shapes here. You can kind of do like we did the waffle cone where we can do that with the live boolean as well. Um, so we'll do it and duplicate this off, do shift D, and now we can go to solo mode. I'm gonna hold down control shift. We're gonna switch this to a circle and I'm just going to get rid of these inside faces here. And we're going to delete hidden and now if we want to inset those, we don't want to inset those, we want to bevel in between each one of these. 
let's do that. So I'm going to go here to my transform. We know this is already 20 around, so we'll activate symmetry in the Z with a radial count of 20. And now we'll go over here to bevel, edge loop complete. And we can just kind of pop in a little bevel there. And then now that we have that, we can go out of X mode here. And we can go to delete, polygroup all, and just kill all those. And then I don't know if these pop out or pop in. I guess we could do either one. So we can go through here. And if we wanted to pop out, we could do Q mesh, polygroup all. And we can have them. Um, kind of be out a little bit and they're right up to the edge. I'm going to knock these back just a tiny bit here. I think that'll look a little bit better. And then we can go to solo mode here and we just hold down shift along this angle. We just pull those in. Um, so again, if we want to do out, we can just union mesh these and we can change uh, just again, holding down shift on these angles here to kind of make those thicker or thinner. Um, if we want them to push in, all we would need to do is make a start group for this and then make a put these underneath. And then we'll do a new start group here. So we'll do two start groups temporarily. We'll make that subtractive, turn on live Boolean, and now we can have those kind of push in a little bit. So it kind of depends on what you're looking for here. But for now, I'll just turn off my start groups and we'll just go with that for now. Um, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like uh, Thomas is going to have... Uh, he's going to do a Kyle Ren helmet creation for 3D printing. That sounds really cool. Oh, and a lightsaber prop. Sounds even cooler. Um, okay, yeah, we got about eight minutes left. What else we got left to do on this thing? So there's a little, oh, there's little bolts or little holes here. Those look like just basic cylinders. So I'm just going to really quickly, I have X symmetry turned on. So I'm going to go into my custom menu here. We'll do like a cylinder 12 here. And we'll just drag those out. And now I'm going to do split mass points. And this one, it inherited the Q mesh properties, which I want to do Q grid of zero, and then we'll do a crease. There we go. We'll just put like a little cylinder in there. And we'll push those back into the corners here. That looks about right. Now these ones aren't going to be mirrored across the x-axis. So I'm going to hit X to go across to kill the x-symmetry, mask this side, Reset that, and then we'll just push that up here. Something like that. Um, if you want to make these um, fatter at the same time, you could also make those nano mesh if you wanted to swap those out later. You could just put planes in there and just assign nano mesh. I did that to my tech suit lady. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Control Shift. I'm going to isolate. Oops. Let's switch that back to a rectangle shape. So I'm going to Control Shift, grab this one, hit Control W, make those a polygroup. And then I'm going to hold down Control Shift, Control W to make those all a polygroup. So now that these middle sections are the same polygroup type, if I go through here and do Q Mesh Polygroup All, and then I hold down Shift, that'll go ahead and change that thickness at the same time, even though it's not across symmetry. Uh, so you can just really quickly go through and change that if you if you're so inclined, if you want to make make those a little bit more substantial. We've got that here. Uh, we got some tape we need to put on here. And it looks like the tape goes here and then down like so. Uh, one easy way to do that would be a couple different ways to do that. You could use the modeler and just put that in. Let's have a little bit of fun with that and see if we can't have the modeler do some of the heavy lifting for us. So what I'm going to do is do a merge visible. But before I do that, Let's go ahead and say copy tool. And I'm going to go to paste tool. So we've got a duplicate of this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Z plugin. And I've in installed the clean tool master here. So this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dynamic subdivisions, subdivisions uh, to traditional subdivisions on all of these ones. So I'm going to keep my other one with dynamic turned on. Now, what, what I basically did was convert all of those subdivisions to real subdivisions. So all this dynamic stuff we had turned on, if we go to geometry, is actual subdivisions. So the reason I did that is so when I go to subtool, merge, visible, it's not going to give me a bunch of dynamically subdivided stuff. So let's go back to this one here. This one has the 
real subdivisions. I don't need any of this anymore. I don't want to get confused either, so I'm going to delete all those. So here's my merged one. So now what we can do is kind of mask where we want those that tape to go, and hopefully uh, Z Modeler will, our Z Remesher will do some of the heavy lifting. So we have a tape, piece of tape that goes here, top to bottom, about here to here will be one piece. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and just Dynamesh this. Turn off Blur, Resolution, Dynamesh. That'll work. Let's Dynamesh all this together. So here's one piece of tape, and then another piece of tape is going to go around the back hereabouts. You know what? Let's make sure we're getting this right. Uh, I probably should save a camera view, shouldn't I? Let's do that real quick. Um, you can use your movie for that, or you can use your document, Zaplink properties, and we'll just save a custom view. So in order to get these tapes correct. I'm going to position this so that it's about right. And then I'm going to go to my uh, standard brush, turn on RGB, and I'm going to go ahead and paint where that tape's going to go. Turn that off, and let's go ahead and knock this color back a little bit. So we're going to go to color, fill object with white, drop our RGB intensity down, and we'll just knock that back. So now we know the tape's going to go from about here to about here, and then from about here Looks like our screw is a little bit bigger than their screw to about here. And we'll say those go all the way around to the side. Uh, so now that we have that, we can hit Control w to make that a poly group here, isolate that, and we'll go ahead and delete hidden. So this will be um, where our tape's going to go, and I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is do an auto groups, and then do a quick mirror and weld. And now we have this piece of tape, and this piece of tape, and all the other stuff can go away like so. I think that's right. Let's go ahead and turn on double. So this is what our tape's going to look like. Um, it looks like uh, we got a little bit of a uh, artifacting going on here. So to clean this up, let's go ahead and do our slice curve. I'm just going to slice through here. And now I can isolate this one and this one. And we'll delete hidden and then just another slice here and a slice here. Delete hidden. And then if we want to, we can scale this back out. Okay, so now we got this, uh, and we got tape, and it goes around all those intricate little pieces here. Now I don't have to Z model or that in, or go through. I could slice those pieces of geometry and Z model that out, but let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna go to um, zero mesher here. We're gonna do half, depth size down to zero. And again, we're just going to try and let Z Modeler or Z Remesher do the heavy lifting for us. I'm just keep doing half, half, half. And I'm going to pull these corners out just to help it a little bit here. Oh, let's also do a quick mirror and weld. There we go. So these ones, if I go into here, I can just pull out to sharper corners. And that'll help Z Remesher say, you know what, I want to keep those sharp. So as I keep going half, there we go. Perfect. I think this is great. So, uh, and the reason I'm, I can go through here and delete all these edges as well, just by going in here and doing like insert single edge loop, holding down alt. Uh, but instead of doing that, I'm going to keep them as they are because I want to make those raggedy uh, corners there. So if we go uh, back to our original here and we're going to go to append our tape. So now we got our tape kind of sitting in there. And when we appended it, threw it down to the bottom. And now we can just go through here Q mesh polygroup ball and pull this out. But before we do that, let's go into solo mode here and um, we'll have X symmetry turned on. And now we can quickly just go through here and like just kind of move these things out or we can move these things up if that's easier. So one, two, three, four and a half. That's about right. Something like that. Kind of vary them just a bit. And then on the side here. There we go. And now I can just go through here, Q mesh, polygroup ball, and we'll just pop that out like so. Um, if you need to make any adjustments on here, we can just 
And if we can add just a little bevel in here. So I can take this one, we'll do bevel edge loop complete. Or we can try sliding this a bit. Let's do slide edge loop complete. Or <laughs> we can just go to the side here, mask it, and then just pull it out. When in doubt, just do it manually. And now if we want to transition that a little bit more, we can go uh, bevel edge loop complete. Kind of bend that around a little bit. Um, all right, that should work. Let's go ahead. Now, when we did that, we made, um, we kind of broke that poly grouping. So what I'm going to do is hold down Alt and then hold down Shift, and I'm going to inherit that green one. So we're going to paint this one green. Hold down Alt and Shift, paint that one purple. Alt, Shift, paint that one. And then Alt, Shift, and inherit that and just paint that. There we go. So now I can just really quickly do a crease polygroup and then also drop my crease tolerance down to grab those corners. And now when we hit D for our dynamic subdivision, we can go through here. Um, and now when we go to render this out, oh, you know what? Let's do Shift D. I uh, forgot that this little piece here is broken through here. No big deal. All we got to do is it might be easier also just to take this back one again, delete hidden. And now when we go through here, we can say, a little bit thinner. There we go. Delete hidden. And then just go through here. And looks like that's more like this. Let's, let's stagger this a little bit so it's not the same. You guys get the idea. Something like that. Increase polygroup, increase tolerance, dynamic. And if you want to make these thinner, again, just go through here, there, Q much polygroup on, hold on, shift, and just kind of push that back. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm over my time, but I am going to go ahead and save this. I made some pretty good progress on that. So streaming, red laser cannon, save over that. Cool. Um, reposting stream, replay, we can watch. Yeah, so let me link you that real quick. If you go to, uh, if you Google Pavlovich YouTube, this is going to be where my live stream on Thursday morning. So I'll see you guys this Thursday morning. I'll be gone for a little bit. Uh, but this next Thursday morning, I'll be on same time on my channel. And then if you go down here to the playlist, you're going to see live stream full episodes and live stream highlights. So you can check those out. If you go to the PixLogic channel here, um, it's the PixLogic channel playlists, and then you'll have uh, my workshop here, Pavlovich Workshop. This is where this one's going to be posted. So just look for it. It'll be episode number 27 if you want to look through previous episodes. Boy, there's a lot of content in here. Phew. So go check those out. Thanks, everybody. Buddy. And I'll see you next time.